Brad, can you hear me okay? I can. Can you hear me? I can. Excellent. Good afternoon, everyone, and good morning to my family out in the West Coast. I want to welcome everybody to today's webinar, Build Your Advisory Services with the legendary Brad Silmanis. <laughs> Infamous. For, <laughs> no problem. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Leah Green. I am one of the senior account managers here with Intuit Canada. I support the amazing accounting professionals out across the northern Alberta region and want to welcome all of you today, tell you a little bit about our amazing host, Mr. Brad Salmanis. So Brad here, he doesn't quite fit the mold of what a chartered accountant usually entails. He doesn't do year-end or taxes. He doesn't wear a suit, instead preferring jeans and a hoodie. Brad networks like crazy and is much more savvy with technology and social media than most accountants. He's personable, he's a connector, and he rides a Vespa 12 months of the year. Brad is also a huge fan of all things QuickBooks and is spreading the love as fast as he can over there out in Calgary. So to kick off today's webinar, the legendary Brad Salmanis. <laughs> hey, you're making my head grow here, Leah. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, here we are in uh, beautiful Calgary, Alberta. I mentioned I, I ride a Vespa 12 months of the year. Not right now. There's a little too much snow on the ground, so that's not happening. I'm going to run through the agenda um, quickly, and hopefully I can stick to that agenda. This is my first webinar uh, with, with Intuit, so I'll do my best to stay on, on, uh, on topic. Um, Leah, please nudge me if I'm if I'm going off topic, but I uh, I'll do my best. So here's our agenda for the day. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about what clients want, at least how I hear it. Uh, we'll have a little polling question about the halfway point, and then I'll touch on some uh, services that might be beyond those traditional sort of services most accountants are known for. So to kick it off, what do clients want? And that's a that's a loaded question because they they do want a lot. But uh, as a non-traditional accountant, I hear it more than most. So let's start by talking about traditional accounting services. And uh, traditional accounting services are often those that follow a weekly, monthly, quarterly or annual schedule. These are the services we think of when the term a bookkeeper or accountant is used, and most likely those services provided by most of you attending this webinar today. We've got bookkeeping, counting in year ends, and of course, tax services. Uh, these are the, the services that uh, when, when people hear the term accountant, that's what they want. And I get phone calls all the time asking for just these. and Obviously, because I don't do them, I refer them on. Um, in many cases, businesses see these as a necessary evil. That's what they tell me. It's like it's like pulling teeth. It's like going to that that for that annual physical that people resist. They they don't want to get bad news, but they know they have to get it done either by uh, for for compliance reasons or just because that's the way they've always done it. They bring in their bookkeeper once a year to clean things up, get the account to sign off on it get the tax return done, and then move on. Upon completion of the work, the accountant bookkeeper is often gone for another year or quarter or however long they're following. Then the client receives a bill, and they often question the value they've received from those services. I get this all the time. They just say, "How should I? why should I pay so much? They didn't do anything for me. And... They're often unhappy about it. And how do I know this? And it's, as I mentioned, I get called all the time where people say the same thing and it often goes like this. Hi, I need a new bookkeeper slash accountant. I then ask if they have an existing provider and the answer is often the same. And it's uh, paraphrasing many phone calls here, but they often say, my service provider seems more interested in making money than in helping me run my small business. Now, small businesses tell me they need help running their businesses on a day-to-day and a week-to-week -week basis, or at least having an accountant provide them with information on how to do it themselves. This is such a common common um, complaint. I, I 
I could run a whole business just by, well, I do run my whole business around that whole thing, but I'm beginning to wonder if I should start picking up some of these other services just because it's such a common refrain that that's, uh, I feel I'm leaving a little bit on the table there. But right now, I like what I do and I'll stick with it. So many of you may know Barb Easter. She's our, our friend from Dry Run. And uh, last year at QuickBooks Connect in Toronto, I was on a fireside chat with Tanis Young and Diane Mueller. And we were talking about advisory services and how people have to distinguish themselves. And we discussed the relationship between bookkeepers and accountants. And the topic of, of advisory came up. And Barb, I love this term. She called it the end of year booty call. Apparently, that's how I summed it up. I didn't use those terms, but it illustrates the points I'm making previously. I actually call this the annual booty call. And I, I talk to clients about this all the time, and that's they think it's a great term. Um, at this point, I'm going to give you a little bit more history of my background so you can kind of see where I'm coming from, from an advisory point of view. I joined KPMG um, back in 1990 and fresh out of university with a business degree. I was going into public accounting. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I wrote and passed the uniform final in 1991, got my CA designation in 1992. Now, for any of you America, uh, Americans on the line, um, that's the same as a CPA designation. And just to confuse matters, that's what we're calling it up here now. I left the Calgary office in 1993 and moved to Bermuda. And I did one more busy year in busy season there and realized uh, public practice just wasn't for me. So I went into industry. And for those not aware um, of the designation, you have two distinct paths that uh, you can follow when you uh, when you get your designation. One is to stick with public practice and the other is to provide, uh, and that's providing traditional services as mentioned earlier. Now it's not all just tax, year ends, bookkeeping. There's lots of other offshoots of that, but public practice is, is very broad and it just wasn't my thing. Secondly, you can go into industry and this often means working for, for different companies in their accounting teams, running their accounting teams, and, and the like. And that's kind of where I found my passion. So, you know, the term chartered accountant, um, a lot of people don't, don't relate it to that sort of thing, but uh, a lot of people do go that route and that's kind of where I went. Uh, my first industry role was as manager for a small offshore investment company. We designed uh, reporting systems for some small mutual funds. We used a, a tool called um, it was manage your own business or mind your own business. MYOB, and I loved it. I thought it was pretty cool. Put some Excel macros to it. We did valuations. We processed subscriptions and redemptions um, to and from the funds. Uh, when I moved back to Canada, I got a role as a controller for a small privately held company, which provided residential valuations to banks to support loan applications. We, uh, we used the internet back when the internet was in its infancy in many ways, and we delivered those appraisals through, through the web. So e-commerce at its earliest stage it was also the first time I used QuickBooks and it was uh, for a different reason. We had an existing system with that company. It was uh, not Y2K compliant. So here I am dating myself. Um, we, we used QuickBooks just to stabilize the situation until we built a system around Great Plains Dynamics. And that's even before Microsoft purchased them. So once again, I'm, I'm dating myself. We built a pretty cool system uh, using order entry. Uh, a order entry system that we developed and a billing system we developed and it was an integrate it was a, we did some integration so even at this earlier stage it was almost like app developments back then i've managed teams from as large as 25 members i've done it i've done hr payroll um you name it i've done it i used to used to make uh make the coffee in the morning and and i'd often uh, shovel snow. I mean, I've been everywhere in small business. So I relate to small business owners. So my brand of accounting really does focus on those small business owners. Uh, 2013, I finally came to my senses, went out on my own. I was providing CFO services for a while. Didn't really, um, um, that didn't really click. I, I got some good, good uh, opportunities, but at the end of the day, I, I found myself looking for a niche and 
2014, I went to CookBooks Connect, San, or sorry, in 2015, after I went to, to CookBooks Connect in San Jose, I went uh, QB exclusive. So I'm telling you all this just to illustrate that not all accountants follow the traditional path. So traditional accountants should really consider that sort of operational side. So a lot of the things I'm going to talk about are more operational in nature and less on that sort of traditional accounting um, accounting and, and uh, a lot of people use the CFO term, throw it around. So I'll touch a little bit on that, but I'm going to touch on a few other things. And first step, or sorry, the first thing I'd like to talk about are conversions. A lot of people hear me online talking about uh, file conversions uh, into QuickBooks. And, and I'll tell you one thing about, about file conversions is it's kind of a controversial topic, I find. A lot of people um, are, are willing to take the easy way out. They take that file that they have from, uh, that the client gives to them, and they'll just use that quick and dirty way to move into the system. So they don't often think of QuickBooks conversions when you think of advisory services, but keep in mind when a client approaches you about going on to QuickBooks for the first time, they, they want it done right. So for the purposes of this discussion, I'm gonna assume we're converting clients into QuickBooks Online. This can also apply to desktop, but I think we all agree QBO is, is the future. Also keep in mind that a conversion is an opportunity to provide a client with a fresh start. It's often an opportunity for you, the provider, to not only understand your client's business better, but help them understand their own business better. I recently completed a Sage 50 to QBO conversion for a client that had almost 20 years of data in their previous system. The client also had hundreds of vendors and customers in their system, which had not been used in years. Most importantly, their chart of accounts was a real mess, with many of their accounts lacking relevance to their current reality. In addition, they had reporting needs that were no longer being met by this existing chart of accounts. Conversions give you the opportunity to solidify the relationship with your client at the earliest stages and set your client up for success for years to come. So don't just think of a conversion as simply a way to get going on the bookkeeping or get going on the year end. Think of it from the client's perspective. They're their books. You have to look at it from their perspective. In addition, conversions provide a source of revenue for your firm. It can be very lucrative. So just jumping into some of the easier way out, why, why leave money on the table? I've, uh, I'll get a, uh, into that a little bit more. But by knowing where your client is coming from, you can help them move forward. So being in the, at that point where you're setting them up, from scratch, you can actually build your your services more effectively, more efficiently around them because you helped set them up in the first place. So let's talk about the different conversion options out there. And I might ruffle a few feathers along the way as I as I talk about this, but I, I think this is an important part of, of the relationship with a new client, especially if they're coming to, from a new system, which is often the case. So we've got the built-in QuickBooks desktop to QBO conversion tool. And I think this tool is awesome because it's quick and dirty. You can have, you know, your client up and running on QBO within minutes. So there are cases where that's perfect. If you look at their data, it looks great. Everything's clean. It works for them. You just flip them over and they're pretty much on, on QBO almost, almost instantly. But keep in mind that this tool only works for uh, Pro and Premier, and I believe you need the account the accountant's version is um, to do this. So if they come to you from enterprise, you can't you can't use this tool. It's strongly recommended that you clean up the data before you move on. Clean up the customer lists, the vendor lists, items lists, chart of accounts before you do an in place conversion. You know, have a look at it. If, if they tell you it looks good, don't always take it at face value because they've been going along at that same comfort level. So go in and make sure that you see it as a good, clean file before you move forward. Because once you make the move, you're kind of stuck with it. Remember, garbage in means garbage out. Take the time to set your client up for success in this QBO file. QuickBooks Desktop also provides a ton of built-in tools that make conversions easier. 
So I recommend using QuickBooks Desktop for clean conversions as well. I'll discuss clean conversions shortly. One area that I've, I've seen problems with are companies with both inventory and foreign currency um, in that desktop file. Be wary about converting those straight across. I've seen situations where the converted QBO file just doesn't operate properly. Um, I had a client call me up recently and their, their file was a disaster and I just chose not to take it on because of that. So, so keep that in mind that, that if, if they have both those uh, situations in place, consider doing a clean install. Now I'd like to move on to this, the, the free version of, uh, of a conversion. Now Intuit, does, Intuit Canada does a fantastic job of getting these conversions done. They'll, they'll provide free conversions for a lot of different file formats and get you into that free, um, into that free space. But it, I take the view that free can come at a cost. It's not always an ideal situation for everybody. Now, the big caveat to the service is they don't do any cleanup before the conversion. So if you just hand them the file and say, here you go, once again, garbage in, garbage out. So clean up that file before you get into it to do the conversion. In addition, they'll bring in some history for you. They'll bring up to, I believe it's two years, but they bring it in the form of journal entries. So as such, you might not be pleased with the results in AR, um, AP, and inventory having journal entries in there. So I think you have to weigh out all the options when considering this free option. If cost is an issue to the client, then you can consider it, but clean installs are always better in my opinion. So let's get on to, to clean conversions. Anyone who knows me on social media knows I'm a big fan of these. I bring them up all the time and I'm often running counter to, to the free option. Um, and I get phone calls from other pro advisors asking me if I can help them out and kind of coach them through the process. It is a, an acquired uh, um, sort of skill and it's something it's good to practice and you got to start somewhere. So simply put, you start with the trial balance at the start of the conversion, which is usually the, the end of the previous fiscal year, the start of the new year. So that's the best time to start. If you start at the beginning, then you don't have to put in a lot of, um, of data for the, for the period. Um, say, say you're two months into the, into the fiscal year when you decide to do this, and you got two years worth of sales, expenses likewise to put in, and that can take some time. Um, history does take time to put in, which is, which is why I tend to avoid history in general. You then manually input the customer, vendor, inventory lists, and the chart of accounts. Sounds simple. It, it is relatively easy if you know what you're doing. Then you put in some details for accounts receivable and payable so that you have those details to, to work through the transactions in the new year. And you also put in the reconciling items in the bank account so you can properly do your bank recs. Then you just start using QBO, just like that. So the key to a good, good conversion is performing it as closely as possible to that year end. So you have as little... Uh, catch up work. But what about history? Um, I hear this all the time. And I have uh, one thing to say about that. And I say, history is overrated. In my career as a controller, a CFO, I found that as time goes on, you rely less and less on historical transactions. In fact, you should be looking forward. You shouldn't be looking past um, very often. You really need to look forward. So, what do you do with that history? I believe that you have to keep it in, uh, in the existing system. If you need it, go back, look at it, but you don't need it in the new system. Keep the previous system alive for historical purposes alone. Keep the previous data file safe and back it up. It doesn't take long before you don't need that file again. If you have access to QuickBooks Pro or Premier, the accountant edition, you have one of the best conversion tools available built into the software are tools which allow you to enter conversion data quickly, such as customer vendor lists, inventory lists. Once complete, you simply use the built-in conversion tool to convert it to QBO. Not happy with the results? Purge the QBO file and try again. I sometimes just do um, 
little conversions along the way. I might put in the customer list and then convert them, see what they look like, purge the, the QBO file, and then move on, and then just go through each step, see how it looks, make sure everything's good. I call those test conversions, and it doesn't take long at all. You can also use tools like Transaction Pro Importer to get the data into QuickBooks Desktop before you do the, the, the QBO conversion. And if you don't have access to desktop, which not everyone does, you can still convert the data directly into QBO. Transaction Pro Importer also has a tool. It's, it's a different tool than the desktop one. It's geared just for cloud, subscription-based. And a real popular tool out there is Sasant, which, which is, is great. That's my tool of choice. So clean conversions, I definitely recommend them. You can do them for desktop. Um, I've had situations where doing an in-place desktop uh, in, uh, conversion just isn't going to work. The data is corrupted or it's too old or whatever, and clients just don't want to mess with it. They'd rather get a clean conversion. Obviously, you have to do a clean conversion with Enterprise. Sage 50, these are, these are some of my favorite. I think that Sage develops their software in such a way that it's easy to get the data out for conversion purposes. So you can get your customer lists out super easy, your vendor lists, all the information you need. Now keep in mind that Sage kind of stores customer and vendor information in a slightly different way than QuickBooks does. So you have to sort of know how to bring it in, but it's when you, you get the hang of it, super easy. Now, a lot of people aren't as, probably aren't as familiar with this tool. Account Edge is, was formerly known as MYOB back in the day. And it's not as common here, but it, it really is another tool that makes it super easy to get, to get the, the software out, or sorry, to get the details out. Then we got our cloud-based tools, Xero, FreshBooks, and Wave. Now, I sort of have a mixed sort of view on these. I think at the end of the day, I find Xero super easy to get the information out of. Um, Wave, it's pretty easy too. Now, FreshBooks is a bit of an anomaly because it doesn't really have trial balance information and all the detail that you might need. So you might have to wing it a bit here. Now, Intuit does offer the free, um, the free solution for these three. So consider that um, for them. And then other systems. I think just about every system out there will export data in a CSV format. Uh, if you have a desktop, import it in there before you do the QBO conversion. And and uh, yeah, it's just about any tool you can think of. But once again, conversions are profitable. My first uh, Sage 50 to QuickBooks conversion netted me a six-figure payday. Now that was a span of about a year and it was a pretty complicated conversion. What had happened was uh, a new bookkeeper came on board, was this, uh, didn't like Sage because didn't understand it, convinced the boss to buy QuickBooks Enterprise, person that had no experience with conversions at all, didn't put in any of the opening numbers, um, actually took two separate legal entities, dumped them into one GL, tried to figure it out. They went eight months and all hell was breaking loose. Um, they were paying vendors twice. They weren't collecting on receivables. They had no idea what their cash flow was. Luckily, this was at the peak of the oil patch boom, and they had money coming in, but they had no idea where they were going. So that was a pretty big one. But I've done quite a few other conversions where you can easily get a, a five-figure payday over a little while. Um, you have to focus less on cost, more on the value that a, that a client's going to get from a nice, um, clean conversion. Once again, history is overrated, and history does become irrelevant quickly. So a clean install to me is like buying a brand new car. And the other methods to me are like buying a used car with a new paint job. Good for some, but not always good for the long haul. So on to our next thing here. I think we're doing a polling question. Now, Leah, are you, are you driving this part? Hello? Hello. So go. our poll for the midpoint question is, which pre-accounting tool does your firm utilize? You'll have two minutes before the polls are closed. We're not, we're not doing market research here. I'm just curious more than anything.
Wow, 1% with the, the auto entry option. I'm not surprised by the other one. None of the above, 28%. But that's, that actually surprised me. Okay, I guess uh, we can move on. Like I say that wasn't market research. I was just curious and I'm a bit uh, surprised by some of that. So here's another um, another area that I have great success in. It's actually a great way to talk to a client. Um, so many clients I talk to um, are still using paper-based processes in their businesses. In conversations with a lot of small business owners, this is a huge pain point I come across. They they just get stuck in a, in a mountain of paper. Recently, I met with a new client who I just put on receipt bank. She was almost in tears of happiness when she realized she was going to do away with previously paper intensive workflow. She was just completely bowled over. Her and her partner just found like they couldn't move ahead because there was so much paper and they were always dealing with paper, paper, paper. So she was pretty happy when we, when we got her going. So try not to think of pre accounting tools like receipt bank, auto entry and hub doc as bookkeeping tools alone to many business owners, streamlined bookkeeping, is but one ideal maybe businesses are many many businesses are weighed down in paper so a lot of the companies that that i talk to they don't necessarily even need bookkeeping and accounting services but this this paperless space is an area where they're really struggling in in many cases the businesses don't even need a scanner it can get by with just the phone with that pre-accounting tool and I sell my clients on the tool. And in the case of a fixed pricing model like Receipt Bank, it actually becomes a pretty profitable recurring revenue stream. So it is an, an option to consider. Don't always feel you have to go for that bookkeeping work. Try and find other ways to use those tools that could morph into work later. I sell my clients on the tool. And in the, oh, sorry. These are the pain points that, pe that people face when, when dealing with, with, with paperless. As we know, the accounting profession loves paper. I, I can attest to that. My, my office used to be, um, had paper everywhere. It used to drive me nuts uh, back in the old days. Snail mail. I mean, people still get stuff in the mail. A lot of vendors will actually offer you the electronic means, but people will still get them in. I actually talk to businesses that say, but I love the feel of paper. It just makes me feel like there's something there. I don't get that. But I believe that they have to take that paper and get it into their pre-accounting or pre-accounting tool. Printing. I don't know how many people print stuff. They get an email of something, they print it out. They get a, a bill in an attachment, they print it out. You got to push uh, push those transactions into your pre-accounting tool. Misfiling. This was an area that used to kill me. I worked in, in so many companies where you have to go find a file. You can't find it because it's either in the wrong file folder or it's sitting on somebody else's desk. File storage. You know, it takes up space. It's, it's costly in many ways, especially if you're using offsite storage. There's time to get it all dealt with. And I, I cringe when I think of all those bankers boxes that that needed to be packed up and moved to dead storage every year and for seven years no less once again use your pre-accounting tool paper's costly you know I, I look back to the days i had to sign off on accounts payable for the staples orders and it was all paper boxes and boxes of paper it all adds up confidentiality i mean the thing about paper files is you can't just leave them lying around when, when there's something confidential in there. Um, it never fails that somebody can see it if you don't lock it down and keep it under, under lock and key. So confidentiality is a huge concern that you, you can knock off with these pre-accounting tools. And this is a big one, disaster recovery. I, I heard about this video circulating this past summer after a hurricane in, uh, in Florida. And somebody mentioned these filing cabinets floating down the, the street. Just imagine if that was your client's financial information. You know, 
what's get, where, where, you know, what, what happens next? And how about the fires in California or BC this summer? You know, those, those, that accounting information is gone forever if it goes up in smoke and you don't have backup. So many businesses don't have a disaster recovery plan. Not just the financial information, but all their data needs to be in the cloud and they can get their businesses up and running quickly. Now, this is a pain point that that a lot of my clients and prospects I talk to, you, you touch on this and they get excited about it because that freaks them out. Insurance can only go so far. And of course, there's environmental issues. Paper kills trees. The less paper businesses consume, the fewer trees need to be cut down. And as my graphic shows, trees are awesome. I, I love them personally. So I, I think other people do out there. You'll be amazed at how many consulting engagements I find where clients need guidance in this area. Bookkeeping and counting is important, but solving the big pain point for your clients can and often does lead to other recurring revenue. I get cases where you know, I help them in this area. People go, oh, this is cool. I love this tool, but they still want you to, to hold their hands and use it, maybe do some bookkeeping for them, what have you. So going back to my client that was almost in tears over her current situation before she went on receipt bank, selling here on this concept of a paperless office led, has led to other service opportunities. So let's talk about cash. Cash is king. How many times do we hear that? But I talk to a lot of clients and they feel like paupers. And what does that mean? It means that even though cash flow is good, they're not managing it properly. They often run into cash crunches by not having their cash up to date in their books. They need the tools and they need the training. Consider talking to your prospects and clients about cash management. Many clients may not require our expertise in traditional areas, but they do need help with cash management. I find that many bookkeepers and accountants don't want to show these prospects or clients their secret sauce. I ask, why not? An empowered client is a happy client. Don't be afraid to show them how it's done. I am surprised at how many clients approach me for help in this area, and they still ask for bookkeeping help afterwards. Show your clients how to use these pre-accounting tools like Receipt Bank, Auto Entry, and HubDoc. Not only to make your job easier, but theirs. Once again, an empowered client is a happy client. I say that again and again for a reason. Now, I sat in on Tom Maxwell of Practice Ignition session at the IPBC conference in Calgary last September, and he said it best in that he feels that real-time reporting is not possible without utilizing a pre-accounting tool. Well, this is my pre-accounting tool, and this is the first time I ever used it with a client. Of course, everyone that knows me knows I'm a big receipt bank fan. I, I took up my my phone, took a picture of a receipt with a client, and just for dramatic flair, I ripped it up, and I forgot to hit submit for processing, closed the app, and lost the the submission. Well, this is my submission that's actually in my accounting system, and uh, it just shows you that uh, you know who needs paper. So that was my first attempt at selling a client on the very concept when I showed a receipt bank for the first time. And it is a great tool. And she loves it. I love it. I run it. I use, my own, use it for my own business. So QBO bank feeds and bank recs. I can't get over how many clients don't understand what this all means. I, I talk to a lot of bookkeepers and accountants and they say, don't let your client near this because they can destroy their own books. Well, I'd much rather show them how to do it right. So they do it right. They can do their day-to-day -day accounting and keep their cash flow up to date. They really need this, this service. Now, some, some clients are just going to say, fine, I don't, I don't need this help. Just do my bookkeeping whenever that's all I want. But you can't proactively run a business without keeping your stuff up to date. So don't feel that just showing um, your client this information that you're going to be cannibalizing your own service offerings because they choose to do it themselves. You build up some good karma for your own business. 
and they'll come to you for other stuff. Payment options such as Pluto and WayPay can help wean them, wean them off checks. These tools not only make authorization and payment of outstanding bills easier and faster than writing checks, but they also play into that paperless goal mentioned earlier. Also much quicker, allows them to stay on top of their cash flow. Accounts receivable is an area that I find a lot of businesses don't have a clue where to start. And I look back to my controller CFO days, this is an area where a lot of businesses need to spend time. Show them how to better manage AR with tools like Invoice Sherpa. Show, show them how to stay on top of collections. Show them how aging impacts cash flow. Find better ways of receiving payment for overdue invoices. I've, I've come across a tool, and some of you might be uh, familiar with it. They were in, in uh, QuickBooks Connect in Toronto last week. The company's called FundThrough. It actually allows you to quickly borrow against accounts receivable and, and get, uh, get, them sell, get clients through short-term cash crunches. It's a super cool tool that just drills right back into QBO, finds the invoices that are there, and sets up kind of a credit limit that allows you to, to get money within a day or two and pay it back at your own um, convenience. Now, you have to pay it back at least once a week, but you pay it back sooner. It's a pretty cool tool. You'll be amazed at the ROI that these tools provide your clients and the goodwill created by showing them how to use them. Uh, good cash management is a must in any business, especially in small businesses that may lack that general knowledge to manage cash in the first place. Uh, I once had a... Um, I once used to tell my staff in, in a past life that if you have your thumb on cash, you have your thumb on the business. Everything runs through the bank account or the credit card account. So staying on top of these things, using the tools and having those, those uh, strategies in place really make a big difference to any business. And it, it, it actually blows me away when I, when I see the reaction a lot of my clients get because, you know, like most of us on the call, they don't have that accounting knowledge. They don't have that ability to just naturally grasp it. So if you build workflows for them, show them how to use the tools and allow them to kind of manage their own destiny, it's amazing how good they feel about their own business. And I firmly believe that the whole reason that we want to provide these services is to allow businesses to, to kind of take control of their own destiny and grow at their own pace. And as they grow, they come to you for, for other things. So the tools mentioned above um, previously, uh, the, 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 pre, uh, the pre-accounting the pre tools, don't think of them as a bookkeeping or an accounting tool exclusively. I know that's how they often market them, but as a receipt bank uh, partner, I find that I can market that tool as a process optimization tool. I don't even mention bookkeeping or accounting in it. And you know, with all these other strategies I talked about earlier, you can really, really get them excited about their business. And even if they don't want your other services, just bringing on this tool, especially if you're a, a partner and they price it correctly, or they price it based on, on your needs, you can actually make money at it. And it becomes a passive income stream, which you know, I just can't stress enough. Uh, Receipt Bank has been a, a super powerful tool for me personally in my own business, but also like my clients. So enough advertising for Receipt Bank. Everyone knows I'm super passionate, but the same things I talk about Receipt Bank can be used for these other tools, whether it be HubDoc or Auto Entry. Don't just think of it as a tool that makes your life easier. Think of it as a tool that is going to help your your clients benefit and that's what I love about it when you're super passionate the tools sell themselves when you show them these pain points that they're solving the tools sell themselves and it just creates that general feeling of goodwill that really does come back to benefit you in a lot of different ways down the road so now now that you've got everything all dialed in you've got your good chart of accounts all in there you got a reporting system that makes sense you got a cash management tool that makes sense. We have some options out there for what if, and I'm just going to touch on a few tools. There's actually so many of them out there 
that can that can help your clients and you can build advisory services around them. We definitely don't have time to go through them all, but I, I just want to touch on a couple. Calgary, everyone knows uh, that uh, a lot of us in the, in the Canadian community love Chata.ai. They're a, a local, a local uh, app developer here in Calgary. I'm actually sitting at the very table where I met Carrie Vickers for the first time. And the cool thing about this tool is it really allows you to drill into your, your client's numbers in a lot of different ways that in, and in a way that your client can actually relate to. I find that the accounting reports within QuickBooks Online, they're fantastic if you're an accountant. Not all accountants or not all business owners get the terminology, whereas Chata allows them to go in, ask questions of their data, and can do a lot of what if scenarios and and actually save those. Now, if they don't necessarily understand it, it's a great consulting opportunity for you to go in there, show your clients how to run these queries, show them what it all means, and even solve some pretty cool sort of problems. I know um, Shirley Mathers out there. She um, she went to Chata. She had a very uh, specific issue she needed to solve. She couldn't get the information in any way. Chata actually helped her, you know, solve that problem. And, and actually she got a pretty good payday out of that. Um, it's amazing how, how you can go to your clients with solving a problem. There's great value in that, you know, don't get hung up on cost. I think we all talk about what something costs, but you always got to put yourself in the shoes of the, of the client. And you know, what is that worth to them? Now, the cost of, of using Chata was a fraction of, of what Sherry Lee actually brought in. And, you know, that completely sold me on the concept of this tool. I was at an event recently where I, where Chata was there and I had clients uh, that happened to be there and I brought them by the, the booth and showed them the tool and they got super excited about it. Cause once again, it takes, you know, we take it for granted. We understand the accounting, but our, Clients don't often do that. So to break it down into plain English, Chata is, is a fantastic tool for that. So while we're playing on the, the Canadian theme and I guess the Alberta theme, up the road in, in Edmonton, we have um, Dry Run. Um, they've been around for, for several years now. And I, I reached out to Blaine, or I think Blaine reached out to me a couple of years ago when he was first going, and, and this tool's really come a long way playing back into that cash management side of things, some businesses really need the ability to look forward and figure out what their cash flow is going to be for whatever reason they run into situations where, you know, are they going to have enough money to get through the week, the month, the year, there's payroll considerations, they've got some capital requirements and they really need to dial in that future cash flow. So by using the pre-accounting tools and all that good coaching you've been giving your clients, now you can move forward and it's a consulting opportunity for everyone out there because not only can you do it for them in many cases, I know in, in, in the case that I've used dry run, the client wants to use it and is using it, but he sometimes doesn't always understand what the assumptions mean. So they come back to you. You can also set up the, the forecasts and the scenarios for them. So cash management with a tool like dry run and there's other tools out there. This is my personal favorite just because the people behind it are so awesome. Uh, thanks, Blaine and, and, and Barb. I'll, I'll call you out there. Great tool. So I, I totally recommend this one. And another tool that uh, I've had good success with in, in the last year is, uh, is LivePlan. Um, this, this tool is, is made for uh, designing business plans, but it's got a super cool forecasting tool built into it. And, and in the one situation where I used it this year with a client, it was the cash flow forecast that was most important. He was applying for a loan and he needed to not only have the, the, qual the qualitative information you know, about his business, but it was that forecast that was the big one. And it allows you to do run a lot of different scenarios, make a lot of different assumptions and do these forecasts moving forward. But the thing I really like about it and is often the hardest part of doing forecasting is, is keeping the balance sheet in balance as you're changing the assumptions. If you try to do it in Excel, you have to do a lot of different things to kind of plug that balance sheet. But 
Live Plan does it for you. You can adjust inventory turns, you can adjust receivable turns, and just tweak it enough to, to get different scenarios. So it, it's a fantastic tool to to use for consulting engagements and help manage your uh, your, your client's cash flow in, in many ways. So like I said, the tools are endless. There's so many of them out there. We can get a bit of app overload at times. And I just say you have to listen to your client's needs, solve those pain points. Don't come into a situation looking to solve their problem before you've even heard what's really ailing them. You have to listen to them. You have to really be almost that doctor scribbling on a pad as, as they're telling you where it hurts. Don't jump right into the, the solution uh, right away. There's so many tools out there. And you know, get familiar with those ones that make you comfortable and that you get really good with and build little niche offerings around there because these sorts of tools really benefit your client in the long haul. And once again, it's that annual booty call. You can fill in that time with providing these other services. And I'll tell you one thing, from what I'm hearing um, from the, the clients I refer on, when they get treated that way in the, in the interim period, and the year end isn't so painful. In fact, in many ways, because they've been taking care of their business, your engagement gets a lot easier. That final bookkeeping or the final accounting for the year, they've been taking care of it. It goes a lot smoother. And it's just a, an, an all around better situation. So pretty much at the end here. So we're going to, we're going to go to some Q and a now and Leah has been monitoring, um, monitoring the feed. So we've got about 10 minutes to talk about any questions you might have. Okay. So one person asked, then asked, what is auto entry? Auto entry. It's um, it's it's a tool much like Receipt Bank in that it um, it does expense management. It doesn't have fetching like HubDoc, so it really is. Uh, I know Receipt Bank has brought in um, vendor fetching and and bank statement fetching. That's not really what Auto Entry does. It's uh, a different way to manage expenses. It actually does a few other things that Receipt Bank doesn't do. You can bring in sales transactions as well. Um, as well as expense transactions, um, it works pretty cool. It seems to be really popular in the U.S. Most of the, the the pro advisors I know from the U.S. and I know some that are were expected to be on the call. That's their tool of choice. That's their pre uh, pre accounting tool of choice. Up here in Canada, the two big ones tend to be Receipt Bank and HubDoc. Okay. Another one here. What if your a QBO pro advisor and need to clean up the desktop. How do you do this if you have never used desktop? Do you get it temporarily from QBO? Who do you go to to make this happen? Well, I don't think you're, you can just go to into it and say, here, give me a copy. Um, pro advisors that use desktop, it is a monthly subscription. I'm, I've kept my subscription alive for four years, even though I don't actually use it that often. It's just nice to have around just in those cases. Um, you can actually buy a copy as a one-off. It's not all subscription-based. It's not really that well-known, but I would consider if you're gonna do a lot of conversions, get your hand uh, your hands on it. Um, there's some good videos out there. Some of the, the, the videos that I learned how to do conversions uh, were from Hector Garcia. And I mean, what doesn't Hector do for us out there? He's got videos on everything. And I learned about how to do these conversions. Um, so yeah, it's a good tool to have. All right, Jennifer Baldick asks, how do you price your advisory services? How do you price your advisory services? Well, you know, I think we all love to talk about uh, value pricing and fixed pricing and, and that recurring revenue. A lot of the stuff that I personally do is very project-based. So um, I do fall back on that hourly rate or I'll quote for a particular, particular project. So I think if, if, if you already have recurring services out there like bookkeeping and, and other things, you can definitely work it into your, your, your pricing models, either as an add on, or you can just include, you know, certain, certain advisory services right into it. But for me personally, I'm still pretty much hourly and project based just because of the nature of my business. I don't have a lot of recurring uh, revenue streams, which makes that a little challenging sometimes, 
because you're always looking for that that next great thing. But uh, yeah, you, I, I think you can definitely factor it in. Right. Another one, some of these tools might be available in studio soon, such as what chat I what would you say to that? Do you think they would be replaced by QBO functions soon? I'm not convinced. Chat is going in directions that QBO isn't even considering. Um, they're gonna they're gonna be able to to work with Stripe and and some of the different payment methods. They're looking at lots of different um, different database sources. So I don't see them going away. Um, they also provide a lot of queries that. I don't see QB Assistant necessarily ever doing because a lot of what um, Chata does through the through their model is they're not just using the data within QuickBooks Online; they're actually running queries against other ways of of, of interpreting your data. So I don't see that tool going away. It may be a complement to QB Assistant, and and one thing to consider: I think we've been seeing that QB Assistant has been in the works for at least a year, a little over a year now, um, still not super effective, whereas Chad is, is, is doing it now. So I don't think you should wait necessarily to say, oh, I'm going to see what QB Assistant can do for me. Chad has ProAdvisor programs. It's worth playing with and worth showing your clients because um, there really are some cool tools in there, and it's not just querying the data. They have dashboards. They have a lot of um, scenarios that, that you can use today to help your clients run their business. All right, next. To go back to conversions, Brad, mm -hmm. is your preference a clean conversion or using the QBO conversion tool for a desktop pro user? Well, it's effectively a clean conversion because what I'm doing effectively is, is doing a clean conversion into desktop. So I'm putting in all the vendor information, client information, inventory information, et cetera, et cetera, creating a brand new file in QuickBooks Desktop, and then using the in-place conversion tool to just bring it over. And as simple as that sounds, that's something I never really considered before. I was actually always using QBO and just doing it from there. And then um, I'm going to call out Connie Sparks in Edmonton. She was saying, "Why not just use Desktop as your as your tool?" And I went, "Oh." Yes, and that's what I used on this last big conversion I did, and it works like a charm just because it does have those tools built right into it. And once again, um, shout out to Hector Garcia. He taught me that, and uh, that the desktop does have these tools, and it does work really well. All right. What is the difference between downloading the bank feed directly from the bank and having a hub doc or receipt bank fetch it? What is the difference? So you're talking about, uh, I think you're talking about the bank feed versus a bank statement. Um, I and would, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that. Um, the thing about bank feeds is they're real time. They, you see them every day. It shows you the new transactions that have come in. When you're pulling those transactions down once a month, when the bank statement becomes available, frankly, I find a bank statement to be a very, um, limited use document. It's I, I just go for the ending balance. And when I'm doing bank racks and coaching my clients, and then running, when you run the bank rack in in, uh, in QBO, you've already got the transactions in the system because you've been using HubDoc and you've been using Receipt Bank or Auto Entry throughout the month. Bank racks take minutes. Bank statements really are only there to validate and, and verify that the bank rack is in fact accurate. It really is that real time side of things of bringing the data in as it's happening. That's huge because it is that week to week, day to day sort of management of a business that clients need to consider. So you got to use them both. All right. And I'll take one more here. Hopefully we have time for another. Is there a quoting slash project app that you would suggest for construction based industry? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's very specific. A quoting slash project app. Um, I don't do a ton of construction work. I have one client that we've been kind of slogging along. And the tool I recommend um, right off the bat is always Noify. 
Um, Noify is it works really well with QuickBooks Online. It's designed for QuickBooks Online. It doesn't work with any other tool. It allows you to do lots of things that QuickBooks by itself is never going to allow you to do. Um, it's really solid on the costing front. It really speaks to the construction business, and it's really can be tailored to just about uh, well, lots of different situations. And it's relatively cost effective. There's other options out there, um, like Builder Trend is the one that comes to mind, and it's pretty complex and can be very expensive. Noify has a very, very affordable business model. It's priced in US, but even still, it's a pretty good tool and their support is excellent. If you get to know the team and talk to Taryn over there at Noify, um, he knows his stuff, he understands the industry, and they have a, a really good uh, Facebook group that, that they support. They have great webinars, and they've actually got a, a, a pretty strong community out there that helps support that tool. So I definitely recommend that. Amazing. And since we have four minutes left, I'll do one more here. In your experience, what is the common problem your clients seem to share? And do you think this will resolve itself in the future with the evolving technology? Hmm. The common problem. It, it all comes down, the, the one thing I always hear is just the challenge that clients are facing, staying on top of their stuff. And with today's technology, it allows them to stay on top of it, but a lot of them just don't know how to do it. And that's where I come down to, rather than just pawning it off to a bookkeeper just to bring the numbers together and then, oh, here they are on a periodic basis. It's that coaching side, showing them how to use it, showing them the benefit, but not just showing them how to use it, but what it means when it's done. It's that sort of interpretation of the data that's, that's huge and that so many clients just don't understand. So if, if you coach them through that, in addition to providing that the bookkeeping services, the tech really does help because of that real time nature of it. And I tell you, when as businesses start to get it, it's so it's so cute to watch them get all excited when they finally see their business in the light they're they're meant to see it. And you can make them into into accountants almost not doing the debits and credits necessarily, but understanding margins and break even and what all that means. That's the stuff they really need to run their own business and that they just don't get. So it's going back to the trusted advisor part, just letting your clients understand what business is all about through the language of accounting. And I think today's tools allow that. Traditionally, desktop-based tools, they don't allow you to look at things as they're happening. It's more of a looking back sort of thing. I call it um, the the reactive accounting. You get a piece of paper, you 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 know it sits in a folder for a few weeks. You you stamp it, you put it into the system. Today's accounting is about being proactive and dealing with things as they happen, and that's where a lot of clients get super excited that they can take control of their business that way. Does that answer oh, the question. Right. I don't know if I danced around it enough. <laughs> Thank you so much to Brad. It has been an amazing webinar today. I hope all of you enjoyed it. Just to let everyone know, our next webinar coming up on December 11th, so that is tomorrow, all about value pricing, how to set and negotiate price for our services. Have a great day, everybody. Big thanks to Brad for our webinar. And enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And thanks for having me, everyone. Uh, we'll see you out there in uh, social media land. <laughs>